Hello everyone, welcome back. Today I would like to do a final review. We usually do this in class. I set up kind of a Jeopardy type um, <clears throat> question and answer type thing. I, I divide you up into to teams and it's, it's usually a, a, a lot of fun. Um, but we're not going to do that today. Uh, instead, you're going to have to endure one final uh, lecture for me. Uh, I will basically just go through the set of slides uh, and talk about the things that you should study and be prepared for uh, on the final. It's going to be very much like the uh, the midterm, uh, 50 questions, uh, fill in the blank, true, false, multiple guess, uh, choice. Um, don't sweat this. If you have been paying attention, if you have any uh, short-term, mid-term uh, memory retention, you'll do perfectly fine with this. Uh, and <laughs> guess what? It's, in essence, open book. So if you're stuck on an answer, you should be able to go back through your uh, uh, PowerPoint lectures or the videos and figure out the answer uh, very quickly. So um, let's go ahead and get started. You would it would probably be a really good idea for you to know all of your fish parts, which, you know, this is not the first time that you have seen this. Uh, all the fins, um, internal organs, it would be a good idea if you uh, knew things like swim bladder. Uh, we talked about the, the different uh, species in Indiana and how we broke them into uh, cold water species and warm water species. We talked about what a game fish is and what a rough fish is. We went in and talked about the different families, uh, the panfish family, and this is kind of a... Huh, I kind of screwed that up down there, didn't I? Um, but you've seen this slide before. So, you know, we, we, we talked about, you know, the, the true bass species, the uh, catfish, perch, pike... Uh, salmonoids, um, <clears throat> uh, rough fish. And we broke them all down in here, and, and then we talked a, a, a little bit about aquatic invasive species. The You know, the one thing that I did not mention in class is that if you do any re, uh, reading literature on freshwater fishing or in the Indiana fishing regulations, they'll use the term black bass and that is a, a collective term of smallmouth, largemouth, spotted, Kentucky. Uh, I think rock bass is, is included in there. Uh, because in, in the DNR regulations, it will say under certain conditions in certain places, you can only have four black bass between this 14 inches and 18 inches and the the black bass is a term that they can use that designates particularly smallmouth and largemouth they're, they're considered black bass don't get that confused with white bass which is a member of the true bass family so smallmouth and largemouth are members of the panfish family but white bass, wipers, yellow bass, and striped bass are members of the true bass family. Remember, true, true bass are the ones that have the tooth patch on there. So uh, that was more information than what you actually need. <clears throat> we talked about the uh, fish and wildlife regulations, uh, why we have fish and wildlife regulations we talked about funding sources for fish and wildlife. We t extensively about the um, Pittman-Robertson Act of 1937 that established a, an excise tax on hunting equipment. And then we talked about the uh, Dingle Johnson Act of 1950. That's where they extended that excise tax onto fishing equipment. Rods, reels, lines, hooks, 
swivels, lures, so on and so forth. We talked about uh, aquatic invasive species and how important it is to uh, not spread these things uh, due to the, the, the various things. Um, we got into fishing tackle and we talked about the three basic outfits for spin fishing the spin cast the spinning and the bait cast uh, outfits the advantages and disadvantages the the spin cast is really inexpensive and really good for someone who's just starting out in fishing the uh, bait cast is is kind of the workhorse of the spin fishing industry very very strong very capable uh, very accurate in the in skilled hands the uh, spinning outfit is very good for maybe a little more advanced I mean I would certainly give a beginner a, a, a spinning outfit the big advantage of, of spinning is they generally have the longest casting distance for most people. Oh, what else? We talked about hooks and how hooks are sized, how the larger the number, the smaller the hook. There's a 1, there's a 10. Uh, we talked about swivels, how they're important uh, to use to keep line from twisting and you can use them to build rigs and take things apart and you know particularly when you're using the snap swivels uh let's see we 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 talked about artificial lures uh hard baits and soft baits uh hard baits almost all of them imitate you know some type of a bait fish a, a minnow uh the soft baits uh, also imi can uh imitate uh uh, bait fish but get into invertebrates you know such as uh, worms aquatic worms uh, crayfish uh, creepy crawlies and things that bass just seem to like to eat we did <clears throat> we did not get to talk about knots um, or, or, or tie knots in class um, sorry about that um, Literally, the improved clinch knot is the only knot you have to know to um, to to go fishing. I mean, just just one knot. When we get into fly fishing, we introduce a couple more things. But to be honest with you, the the way that's moving right now, you could do most of your fly fishing with just the improved clinch knot. We talked about natural baits, uh, worms, night crawlers, so on and so forth. We talked about um, grocery baits, things that you can get at the uh, grocery store. Uh, I mentioned that the hook and bobber rig is is really the simplest rig you can use to catch fish. I mean, you have a line, you have a bobber, you have a hook and some type of bait. Add some split shot if you need to. It's it's not a requirement. See, we also talked about the Kentucky rig. That's where you would have one line coming down with a weight at the bottom and then two hooks streaming off that standing line. Um, let's see. Oh, yeah, we got into uh, different types of uh, fishing rigs, particularly with soft baits. Um, the uh, Carolina rig down here, this is really good for you know <clears throat> particularly from a boat where you're casting into the shore and then you're just kind of you know um, uh, bumping it down the, uh, uh, the the shoreline the Texas rig there's the Texas re rig up here in the weeds uh, because that's what it's really really good for it has the the bullet weight up here um, onto the worm hook right there and then your your worm or your soft plastic bait of choice just cast that right into the weeds right into the uh the fallen tree and work it through it virtually never hangs up it's fishing so of course it's going to happen sometimes uh, we talked about wacky rig where you're just putting a hook right through the middle and casting it out 
And let's see, where's a wacky rig? Huh, they actually don't have an illustration for it down here. Uh, anyway, um, those are the, 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 the basic rigs. Uh, we got into fly fishing virtually. Um, I talked about how you want to spend a little bit of money for a decent uh, fly rod and reel combo. Uh, 125 would be good. 150 would probably be a little better. And of course, I got a thing from um, Bass Pro Shops uh, the other day. They have one for $50, $75, something like that. Eh, I don't know. As long as it doesn't have a level line, I think it would probably be worth a try. They have a good return policy. Uh, if they have a weight forward line, which is what I suspect, yeah, I'd I'd give it a shot. I mean, you could already always return it if you if you didn't like it. Um, if this is your first fly rod, you probably don't really know what's good what's bad uh, if you get frustrated with it then you'd probably want to uh, maybe think about returning it or finding a more experienced fly fisher and and have them uh, give you an idea uh, we talked about flies and how i think that they're uh, actually more effective in catching fish than, than like a hard plastic bait. Um, these things are in the water, they're moving, they're pulsating, they're made out of natural materials, and they just do a really, really good job. Uh, let's see. Then we discussed finding fish and really digging into kind of the... Um, uh, the, the life cycle and environment of fish and keying in on three distinct things. The, the food fish eat, uh, the protection that fish need, and, and the, the, the comfort level of fish. The food we talked about... Yeah, the food we talked about, all the things that fish eat, you know, the, the, the different minnows and, and shiners and, and bait fish and um, the aquatic species, the, the aquatic worms, uh, crayfish, nymphs, larvae, um, and then terrestrials, the things that are normally on land that end up in the water, uh, spiders, ants, bees, um, night crawlers, earthworms. Um, small slow moving squirrels we talked about the protection the fish need um, the differences between uh, structure and cover we got into the the comfort levels of fish and how that is primarily driven by water temperature uh, we discussed the the kind of the the, the well fish sex um, <clears throat> how when water temperature hits about 60 degrees, the, uh, the smallmouth uh, come in to, uh, to spawn. Um, one thing that I, I didn't go into was some of the other species. Sorry, tangent. Uh, bluegill will usually spawn about 5 degrees above um, largemouth, so around 65 degrees seems to, to trigger smallmouth uh, or uh, uh, bluegill. Uh, catfish wait until it's about 80, 85 degrees. And your species, particularly in the perch family, uh, they're active at between about 40 and 45 degrees. And unlike uh, panfish, you know, that build the, the nests and then guard the nest, the, the, the perch family actually will swim along a, a weed bed and the female will, will discharge her eggs in kind of this gelatinous ribbon that, that cling onto the weeds and then she's gone she's off you know doing other things and then the male will come by and then uh, uh, re release the sperm to fertilize the eggs so it's a totally different breeding uh, uh, pattern um, than 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 the the panfish very very interesting uh, let's see we 
talked about uh, oxygen content and how fish need between uh, eight and nine parts per million to be happy and anything under about five parts per million they they croak we discussed where to find higher concentrations of oxygen uh, particularly around vegetation uh, weed beds uh, we talked about wave action and and how that can influence um, uh, oxygen levels <clears throat> we talked about weather effects and how that can can affect uh, uh, fishing uh, basically st stable weather produces stable fishing uh, and then of course the converse uh, whenever it's thunderstorms lightning out there don't be fishing it's dangerous and the fish aren't really that interested um, so don't fish during you know bad weather we got into safety like don't fish during a thunderstorm uh, we also talked about uh, getting a, a hooked and different ways to um, get the hook out and there is no right answer here it's whatever you decide to do based on the situation that you're in so literally take your 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 pick here just w whichever one uh, uh, would would work better we talked about um, boating uh, uh, boating and safe boat operation and the importance of wearing a, uh, a PFD we talked about uh, drugs and alcohol on the water and how that is different than drugs and alcohol on land which sounds kind of weird we talked about hypothermia uh, its dangers, how it literally can sneak up on you. Uh, we talked about the rule of hypothermia, uh, you know, where the air temperature and the water temperature uh, are less than 100 degrees. There is a real risk of hypothermia. Um, I'll get to that in a minute. <clears throat> Let me go through my notes here and make sure that there's nothing that I've forgot from the slides. Uh, let's see, bait casting. Structure. Oxygen, yep, we did that. We talked about, um, oh, you should know the difference between, uh, you should know what a thermocline is. You should know the difference between an oxycline and oxyclean. Uh, let's see, what fish eat, we talked about that. Preserved baits, Colorado, Texas. Uh, let's see, not safety. Uh, safety, we talked about wading. Oh, we talked about low head dams and de hooking ourselves. Uh, cold injuries such as hypothermia, a cold shock, the role of hypothermia. We talked about giardia. Uh, let's see, conservation and ethics. We talked about the why. We talked about the how with the fishing license sale. If you want to support wildlife, Go buy a fishing and or hunting license, even if you never, ever, ever use them. Uh, that money generated, you know, has a big impact uh, in our state. Uh, fishing license, Pittman, Robertson, Dingle, Johnson, DNR, what they do. Uh, their conservation side, the fishing uh, biologists, the uh, law enforcement side, the conservation officers, and oh catch and release uh, we, we discussed um, one of the big advantages of catch and release is about 90 percent of the fishing regulations go away if you're not keeping the fish you don't have to worry about size limits or creel limits or possession limits um, if you catch a trout while you're bluegill fishing and you throw him back then you're not in violation of not having a trout stamp um, we talked about leave no trace ethics you know finding a place better than or leaving a place better than you found it I think that's just about it 
and so we'll, I'll, I'll post this video and then if you have questions uh, post those in your comments and then then I'll respond I want to release the final exam April 29th probably in the morning and take the exam and I ask that you email me your results so you can just open up your 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 email uh, app and you know one two three four five six seven so on and so forth <clears throat> and you know just put your answer down you can use a letter you know number seven is D well I, I, I don't know that I just made that up so don't don't just uh, no. um, just email those to me and I'll grade them and um, then post them on on uh, on canvas I think that's the simplest thing that we can do so we don't mess with a whole bunch of IU stuff and uh, also if any of you would like to take the the final exam early after you've completed all of the uh, you've watched all the videos um, you've turned in your fishing report you've done your extra credit um, shoot me an email and I would be happy to send that to you um, it's one thing you could get out of the way and concentrate fully on on the rest of your your classes uh, there are some bonus questions that I've put on the um, the final exam I would really appreciate if you uh, if you you tackle those um, you get points for it I get some feedback for it so anyway I would like to express to you how much I've enjoyed this semester you guys have been a fantastic class you well literally unprecedented um, have, have had to deal with a lot of stuff um, changes disruptions and I think you've handled it admirably so anyway um, good luck and good fishing <laughs>